Welcome to our review on the transpiration stream. First thing we need to know are a couple of key definitions. The first one, transpiration, is the loss of water vapour from the aerial parts of a plant or the leaves. And the second, the transpiration stream, is the movement of water from the roots through the xylem and out of the leaves. So go careful not to mix up the word transpiration with the transpiration stream. What we actually find is that in our plants, any of the water that they lose through the leaves has to be replaced by uptake through the roots. So remember when we're talking about how water gets into the plant, it's absorbed through the roots. So if we consider how the water gets into the roots in a little bit more detail, then what we find, water is moving, so hopefully our brains are kicking in and saying, this is going to be osmosis. And the way that it gets into the plant by osmosis is through the root hair cells. Now the root hair cells are very important because of the way they're set up, then they increase the surface area. So that means that osmosis will happen much quicker than if we didn't have root hair cells. Once inside, then it travels from cell to cell until it reaches the xylem in the middle of the root. And then once it's in the xylem, it can be transported throughout the rest of the plant. If we think about what the leaves are like now, then on the surface of the leaves, we have this structure called the stomata. And I've given you a microscope image on the bottom left there. So the stomata actually allow carbon dioxide to diffuse into the plant. And hopefully you remember carbon dioxide is one of those vital parts needed for photosynthesis. The reason that our stomata aren't just these open holes all the time is because they're actually surrounded by these special types of cells called guard cells. And the guard cells will control the opening and closing of our stomata. So that what we find is when the plant has plenty of water, then the guard cells are swollen or turgid and the stomata are open. But if the plant doesn't have much water, then the guard cells are shrunken or flaccid and the stomata are closed. When the stomata are actually open, then water is going to evaporate from the cells inside the leaf into the air spaces. So we then create this concentration gradient between the inside and the outside of the leaves. Hopefully we do remember that water vapour will move down the concentration gradient and therefore it diffuses out of the plant and into the air. As that water is lost from the leaves, then what we find is there's a reduced pressure in the xylem vessels in the leaf. So water then moves up through the xylem from the area of high pressure to the area of low pressure. So it moves from the roots where we've got the high pressure to the leaves where there's the low pressure. So it's moving down the pressure gradient. Because it's not always advantageous for our plants to lose vast quantities of water, then they've got certain adaptations that help them to reduce water loss. And one of these adaptations is the fact that the surface of the leaf is covered in a waxy layer called the cuticle. So make sure you remember that phrase waxy cuticle, and you can see the effect on the bottom left picture there, that it's going to actually reduce the water loss from our plant, which is beneficial if it grows in particularly quite dry areas, then it will have a thicker waxy cuticle to reduce water loss further. If we end up with a plant that's in a situation where it's losing water faster than it's being taken in, then the plant wilts, as you can see in the picture at the bottom there. So as a result, then the plant's leaves will collapse and droop, and that reduces the surface area available for the evaporation. The stomata will be closed, and the big downside to that is it's going to limit photosynthesis. Because as we said earlier, the stomata allow the carbon dioxide to diffuse into the plant. So if the stomata are closed, carbon dioxide can't enter, so photosynthesis can't happen at the same rate because there's less carbon dioxide present. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now state what is meant by transpiration. You can describe the transpiration stream and explain how the stomata control water loss from the leaves.